So I had been playing Doom lately. In fact, I've been playing a lot of Doom lately. Um, Doom 3 in particular. Um, and I was thinking, um, this game, when it came out in 2004, w when I was growing up, it, it was the most amazing thing ever. I mean, put it this way, this game had amazing graphics and physics, which is important, in a time when there was just nothing like that at all. In fact, graphics were, you know, mediocre at best in, in every video game. Um, and there were no physics engines, really. I mean, there were some archaic ones, but none that really functioned at the level that Doom 3 ended up doing. It was completely revolutionary in the graphics department. So basically, at the time, everybody wanted to buy a computer that could play the game. So, naturally, they spent fortunes on computers that could run the game. Back then, anyway, and, you know, it, I'm, if back in the day, if I mean, just a little after the game came out, um, you had, what was it, the NVIDIA 5800 or something. It was some piece of junk, but if, if you look back onto it, it was, wow, back then I got to experience amazing graphics. At a time when games just did not have that quality of, of graphics that they do, it, you know, nowadays where we take it for granted and physics and all that, it's kind of expected now. But back then it wasn't. Um, it was essentially a a benchmark game. It was a game used to benchmark computers at that point. Um, so there was there was a lot to it, you know. Um, as for sound, the sound quality is utterly fantastic. In fact, um, the game has been praised for years on this very same situation. Um, in fact, you'll notice the sound quality in Doom 3 is actually um, quite superb. In fact, at the time, it was one that created a very, <clears throat> I should say, very closed environment kind of claustrophobic but also metallic so you kind of had the um sense of atmosphere that you got out of the alien franchise in fact um you really felt immersed in the game um as i was saying before it's, it's kind of like a survival horror ish but not it, i mean this is before the time of um games like amnesia and um you know the games from fractional games and like that so the survival horror franchise wasn't really you know matured in that time so back then we had doom 3 pretty much and a few other select horror games that were very good but you know this, this definitely fit the profile of an atmospheric horror game while also being a first person shooter and I, I still think it's one of the very few um ever that has been able to pull it off so effectively and that and that's really something that needs to be said about the, the franchise in general and the, you know the games um that it kind of helped show people that, you know, you don't have to just be a first-person shooter. You don't have to be a horror game. You you can kind of blend them in two, um, into one game, which, you know, you see many other game franchises doing similar things like that. Rand and Cheese. Oh, my God. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, there is just, there's so much to be had from this this game franchise um especially doom 3 you know and in, in in that sense so there's really a lot to to take in it's not it's the, the sound that you got the graphics and you know the the gameplay the gun game it wasn't as revolutionary and, and a, a powerful feeling as would be um games like i should say um counter strike um counter strike has a very um prominent and and extremely detailed gun firing system there's an absolute science to that game they put so much work on the gunfire now um there just isn't as much of that in doom 3 it, in fact in, in for example in counter strike global offensive you can tap 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 someone's head and it'll always be there if you're standing still and you hold wait time but in Doom 3, your bullets kind of go everywhere. So it, it, it's still more of a run-and-gun game as opposed to a very 
scientific game in terms of gunplay. Like, um, you can go around with a shotgun and pretty much kill everything in the whole game. So, that is very pleasant. It, it, it's... It's just so thrilling to be able to run around a game with a shotgun and just blow everything up, which is kind of like the first two Doom games as well and many other games. But um, it, it blends this this these genres very well, I I, I think. Um, so pretty much you have the guns, you have the you know the gameplay as a whole. There's monsters coming out of corridors and the, there's a dark, gloomy atmosphere into the game. Um, in, in fact, I had been playing this game. Like I said, since I was, since I was growing up, I mean, it was just I loved it. It was my favorite, in fact, when I was growing up, um, for this type of guns. I I wasn't a big fan of Counter Strike because I I sucked at it. You know, growing up, I was like you know a few years old at that time. I I think I was eight years old. Uh, about eight years old. Yeah. So um, that game, you know, when when Doom Three came out, it was just a new experience for me. And that's just something I like very much. It's very pleasant to me to be able to see that. Um, as opposed to games like Half-Life, which came out you know, around the same time as Doom 3, in fact. You, you had this amazing set of video games that came out at that time. In fact, I'd say that ended around there, that the golden age of video games. In fact... Um, you know, 2006, 2007, I'd say really that was kind of it. And now, you know, all the games are kind of the same, but back then you had these games. Um, I should probably go more into the, um, the content of Doom 3. Um, you basically are a Marine sent to push, or I'm sorry, <clears throat> investigate, um, the situation on Mars is building up that, you know, you're assigned to... Mars security and you're basically you're just a marine you know you're working there you're um you came on board with two guys who went to investigate issues with you know there's, there's a lot of politics go on this one scientist pretty much um ends up doing experiments with uh teleportation technology and ends up essentially opening a portal to hell and he turns into a bastard sent gives away some very important critical object that allowed the ancient Martian race to take out the aliens, or demons, sorry, from the first invasion, and he stole it and sent it to hell, and so on and so forth. And, you know, he ends up bringing it back onto Mars, and he's a corrupt bastard. So, pretty much, you spend the whole game um, running and blowing shit up, essentially. Um, which, I guess, if you boil it down to that, isn't that much different than many video games. However, um, at this time... To have an introduction to a game on, in the same vein of a game like, for example, Half-Life, which fundamentally changed the genre even again. But this was even before. And in fact, you'll see if you ever played the original Half-Life, it had an introduction type. You that, Revolutionary for the time, I, I might add. Um, and it was the game I played. I loved it the most when I was a few years old. So that was the game I played first. That was my first ever game, and it was t turned out to be one of the best games ever created. Um, so that had an introduction. So really, if you think about it, not many games really had an introduction. Um, and Doom 3 offered this kind of as a way to see what a normal day is like. In fact, I'm assuming they really kind of got the idea from Half-Life, because in Half-Life, you'll notice in the beginning of the game, you get to see what an average day is like in Black Mesa. You know, you, you just go to work, you go to take the damn train all the way to, you know, uh, anomalous materials and all that, and processing, handling, and what whatnot. And um, in, in Doom 3, you get to see what life is like aboard Mars as a Marine for just a slight period of time. You see all these scientists moving about and doing work, engineers, people repairing things. It's, it's actually quite interesting. And it's something that allows you to appreciate the differences that you notice once the game turns to literally hell. Um, so that that's something that, that, that just needs to be talked about when you talk about games like Doom 3. Um and like I was saying, that Half-Life 2 came out a little bit after Doom 3, and you know, before Doom 3, there just wasn't much in the graphics department at all. And that was just 
an incredible change. It was just something that changed everything. Um, however, Doom 3, if you notice, has a very, nowadays at least, a, a very kind of blockish, kind of pixelated feeling to it. The textures aren't his refined as they were before but the game still holds up surprisingly well and i think that is something that needs to be really considered i mean you can still play the game in 2000 you know almost 2016 now and still appreciate the game almost the same as when it came out just that is just unbelievable it is absolutely unbelievable um same with half-life 2 and the other greats that's how you know it's a great game you know, some other games just didn't hold up as well. In fact, I, I don't know. Um, I can go into other games later, but um, System Shock 2, which I'll be glad to, to talk about in, in a separate video. But keeping on the track of Doom 3, you have a game where everything is different at the time. So in 2004, you have this amazing difference. People, fans of Doom kind of hated it, and kind of, but it also attracted like non-fans of Doom because it was really cool game and it had amazing graphics so why not right everybody loved it uh you'd have a meaty computer to do it so it was the benchmark test this was before crisis came out and the game the gameplay as i was mentioning before just isn't that you know it's not that amazing i mean it's still some of the most fun time i've ever had but it's you know it's not the pinpoint accuracy type of game that that like counter-strike is but it doesn't aim to be so that that's something to keep in mind. There's, the game has a lot of blood on it. You know, the environments are highly metallic. Um, so it's still kind of an arcade-ish type in a way, in that sense. But it, it operates essentially the same as Half-Life 2, and that and that's kind of an arcadey type game too. Um, and you know, these games kind of worked in tandem with each other at the time. So basically, what you had was just amazing games to play. They had a lot of great fun back in 2004, guys. Um, and and Doom 3 was just a game that you know, held up really well. It, it's still being able to play, be played today. You can still download it. You can buy it on Steam for dirt cheap. They re-released an HD version of the game, which kind of sucks, to be honest. Um, and it, it the game it took advantage of lighting in, in a sense that dark and light, you you know, you, you, could, you had a flashlight you had to use. You had to switch to a flashlight to kill enemies. Or, or sorry, to illuminate areas and then kill enemies. So you had a fear factor because you were harmless, you know, when, when you had the, the, the flashlight out. You couldn't kill anything. So, you know, when you take your flashlight out, whip around a corner, and all of a sudden there's a demon right there staring at you with orange, yeah, orange eyes, it's, it's kind of terrifying. It's an interesting experience that holds up today really well. And this BFG edition removes it, which is preposterous. Um, now, there are many mods you can download for the game. Um, some I recommend. Perfected Doom, absolutely recommended. Um, Sick Mod. This is a graphics mod that pretty much modernizes the game. Um, and the video actually that this is running on is running off of Absolute HD mod. So you get you get an impressive amount of gameplay on Absolute HD. Um, you can see the differences in gunplay and all that. It's it's quite interesting change now I, I grant I understand I don't have much sound in the game but you, you, you'll see that watching this you get to see all the different new effects if you haven't seen original footage just you go and watch it anywhere you can find any footage on it but you know the game just looks crispier it looks kind of meatier sick mod is embedded into the HD edition and, and textures are updated so the game just doesn't look as bad simple as that um, though I didn't really want to make this review kind of about that as so as much as retrospective look on doom 3 so um you know that's pretty much it guys um thanks for watching i'm gonna have plenty more of these to come up so stay tuned